Welcome back to Pursuit Fishing. Uh, we're going to talk some trout fishing today. I have had a few people reach out recently and ask me, you know, how I fish for stock trout, what baits I use. Uh, hey, I'm not, I, I like, they've said I like to fish spinners, I'm not catching a lot of fish. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to go through my three favorite ways to fish for stock trout. Two of them involve synthetic baits, power baits of sorts, and the last is spinners. Uh, we'll go through those variations and then how I fish it. So, so I fish the Mackenzie River quite a bit, upper and lower for stock trout, and I live really close to Alton Baker, so sometimes I just run over there and, and catch a few. Of the people that have been reaching out to me, David Reed, I want to give you a shout out. I love that you reached out, man. You were cool. Uh, asked some great questions, so thank you. Uh, I, I hope more of you reach out, right? I, I like to interact with, with uh, fishermen in general, so keep it coming. Comment, reach out on Instagram. I'm good with it, I like it. The, the two ways I like to fish for them with synthetic baits are power worms and power eggs. I don't like power bait. Power bait, the dough stuff, you know, I, I don't like it. I don't think it stays on the hooks well. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't catch as many fish on it as I used to, right? Growing up as a kid, power bait was awesome. I mean, we'd go out and just catch fish after fish, and for whatever reason, I just don't catch as many on it anymore. Let me show you the stuff I take out. Um, okay, so regardless of which rigging method I use, one is a split shot, and I'll show that, the other is a Carolina rig, basically. It's a slip sinker, a bead, a swivel, a leader, and a hook on the end, right? So one of these methods is, I would say, simple, beginner, that being the split shot. The other is more advanced. And advanced doesn't mean hard, right? Advanced just means more knots and more terminal tackle. And I'll go through why I like both. So power worms. These, these are fantastic and I have a weird way of rigging them. Uh, power eggs. Don't get the gulp ones. Get the Berkeley Power Bait Power Eggs. Here's why. They are so durable. I'm pinching the crap out of this. I'm actually trying to break it in half with my nail. I was able to do it. That was not easy, and that's why. The other ones, the gulp ones and all those, they come apart, they don't stay on the hooks. These, sometimes I go out and limit out and use the same egg, right? You just, they, they just stay together, they're fantastic. I take a box like this. Um, I take a little tackle box, but I take a box like this because I can throw all this stuff in my pocket and walk along the bank, and if, you know, if I snag up and break off, whatever, tie up a new one. All right, so what's in here? Uh, a bunch of, a bunch of little corkies. These are just little floats, and I'll sh show you where I use them. Super cheap, you get them at Bymart in volume. Uh, variety of colors. I like this color, it's a green, pink, and white. I like this color, it's a shiny blue and green. And I really like this one, uh, but in this size is too small. It's like a pearl black. It almost looks like snakeskin. Honestly, I don't know that the color matters that much on the float. Um, get some of these little beads. Again, super cheap, all this stuff is cheap. And get the smallest. Don't even know if this will show. The smallest swivel you can find. Gotta have the swivel. That is not gonna show. Is that gonna show? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, 
But anyway, get the smallest, not, not the clip swivel. It's got, you know, two tie points, and I'll show you why. And then any, any small bait hook, doesn't matter. Go small, like size eight or 10. Just big enough to put the worm and the power egg on there. Get some split shots. Everyone knows what a split shot weight is. Um, I don't know, I think this is maybe 3 sixteenths, maybe an eighth or a quarter, somewhere in there. And some slip sinkers. Slip sinkers, right, looks like an egg. The line runs through the middle. Uh, I normally get an eighth and a quarter, depending on water depth and current. All right, we will get into how to rig this stuff. Oh, I forgot one thing. You need, if you're gonna fish spinners, you need some snap swivels. Uh, you can change out your spinners really easy and that swivel keeps you from getting line twist. All right, now you know everything you need, right? Slip sinker, bead, the smallest swivel you can find, small bait hooks, size eight, maybe size 10, low corkies, power eggs, and a power worm. Again, not really sure color matters that much. I really like white power eggs, use orange sometimes, uh, and I, I always get pink power worms, always. This is what I would say is the more advanced way to rig it. Uh, this is the way I prefer, and it's optimal for a couple reasons. Let's, let's show you how I rig it. You take the little swivel, hopefully this shows, Take your main line, put your slip sinker right here on first, right? Let that go down the line. Put the bead on. The bead should be between your slip sinker and your swivel, right? So you put those on, then you tie the swivel on. It'll look like this. That bead just helps keep the heavy weight from banging into your knot over and over and weakening, weakening the knot. Once the swivel's on, tie a leader onto the other end. Right, now your leader's on. Take the end of your leader, slip your little corky of choice on there, and then tie your hook on. So what you will get looks like this. A little hook with the corky that moves on the line. This corky helps float your bait up. So when your weight's in the bottom and you have your power egg and your power worm, this will float up in the water. And that's what you want. Let me put an egg and worm on here. Ooh, that is stanky. Okay, so if you're all rigged up, I take the worm and right through the fat part of the worm, I push the hook right through the middle. Literally just push it through the middle. It looks, it looks like garbage, right? I mean, this is it. it looks like garbage. It's, it's, I took this from bass fishing. This is how you wacky rig a Senko, right? The Senko is just hooked in the middle and it floats around. Bass go nuts for it. So I tried it for trout. So I put that on first. I grab the power egg and I just hook like maybe a third of the egg and I bring it around. and I leave the hook tip exposed. All right, I wanna be able to get that hook into the fish. I don't bury the hook tip. This is out right now, it's stuck in my finger. That allows you to get it into the fish. So this right here will float up and it is ugly. Like this is so ugly, but it works. Like I, I don't know the last time I got skunked using this method. Sometimes the fish aren't in the hole you're fishing and that's gonna suck and you just need to move. But this works. When you're doing this, when you're done, 
set this in the water, make sure it floats. If it sinks, your hook's too big. And that's also the reason the corky matters, it helps it float up. So that's the more complex rig, again. Split shot, bead, swivel, two liter, little corky, that slides on your line, small hook, power worm, power egg. When I'm fishing the river, I use about 24 inches a liter. The GoPro is going to make this a little bit deceptive in how long that is, but I like a long liter. And the reason is there's current in the river, right? So when the weight's on the bottom, this is floating and the current's pushing it. So it's not going to float straight up, right? The current's going to push it and then the weight and it's going to drag along. So if I have a real short leader, that current's pushing it down right by the bottom. I want it up off the bottom a bit. So I use about a 24 inch leader in a pond or a lake. I may use a shorter leader depending on how deep it is. If it's a deep lake, you can use a longer leader. So play with your leader length, you know, I would say 10 inches minimum to 24 max. The advantage to this, I'll say the advanced rig, the Carolina rig for trout fishing, couple things. Your weight slides on the line, right? So if a fish comes along and bites this bait and takes off, it can pull the line through the slip sinker and you can feel it. If we have a split shot, your weight is clipped to the line. So there's a bunch of slack in your line that a fish can pull on and you will not feel until the fish actually moves the weight. On this one, again, right? The fish can pull the line through the weight so you will feel those subtle little trout bites so much better. That is the main advantage in my mind. And with little trout bites where they're like, tap, tap, you feel a tap. Sometimes with the split shot, by the time you, you feel that, you know, they didn't eat it. Or, you know, with stalker trout, sometimes they just swallow it and it's gut hooked. Um, on that note, if you catch a wild trout, know how to identify them. There's a fin on the top. I think it's called the adipose fin. Uh, down by the tail fin, it'll be clipped for stalkers and they will have one on a native trout. Let the native trout go. Check the regulations. You have to let them go in most bodies of water of Oregon. If you gut hook a native trout, just cut the line out of its mouth and retie. We don't want to kill them. Uh, so I also think, right, being that you can feel the bites better with this rig, I get more fish hooked in the mouth versus down in the gills and in the stomach. That is the more advanced version. Here's the simpler version. It's literally a split shot. I'd start maybe around a quarter. You could go up to, you know, maybe add a quarter and then add a second one that's an eighth if you need it, but about a quarter. Um, I normally use pliers because I don't like to put lead in my mouth, but I'm gonna bite this down. You basically pinch it on the line and then you do the exact same thing I showed. I don't have a hook on this one because I just grabbed this pole and a buddy of mine broke it, broke the hook off. Same thing, slip the corky on. On this setup, you don't need that bead or the swivel. Just slip the corky on the line. Tie your hook on, put your bait on just like the other rig and you're good to go. All right, that corky slides and helps float your bait. The disadvantage to this rig. Well, let's start here. If you just want simple, you just want simple, you just want to go catch trout, or you're a parent and you want to help a kid go catch trout, this is easy. Throw a split shot on, throw a corky and a hook on, and you're good to go. Um, there are some disadvantages, right? Like I said, if this line is floating out there and a fish bites it, you're not going to feel it. Right? As they move, I don't know if this line's going to show up, but it can move the slack in the line and you won't feel it until the fish pulls hard enough to move the weight. With the slip sinker, it pulls the line right through the weight so you feel it better. The other disadvantage, let's say you get this hung up, which is going to happen, right? Let's say you get it hung up and you pull. Well, your weight will slide on your line and it can singe and mar the line and weaken it. 
you're probably not going to break off on stalker trout, but if you happen to be fishing where they put the trophy ones in there, you get two, three, four, ten pound stalker trout. That's not a good thing. Um, so that's that's the drawback. Uh, but if you know what you're dealing with, you know, not a big deal. Again, you want simple? Throw a split shot, a corky, and a hook on. Let some kids have fun. Go have fun yourself. It works. Um, I just, you know, I like the kind of Carolina rig. I like to feel the bites better. Uh, I don't, it doesn't snag as much. That egg-shaped weight doesn't snag as much. That's kind of it on how I rig them. So how do I fish those two setups? Uh, I fish them identically, right? I go out there, I look for deep holes. I try to throw the bait across or just above the hole that I want to hit, right? The spot that I want to fish in the river. I don't throw directly upstream. So let's think about this. If this cork is your weight, and this is a rock in the river, and you throw upstream, the current is going to push the corky under rocks. And then when you pull, right, because you threw upstream, you're pulling into the rock, right, because you're over here. If you throw across the current or just up the current a little bit, now the current, if it pushes you into a rock, you're over here, right? This is you. And when you pull, you're often pulling back out from under the rock. So I find I can get out of snags much better if I don't cast upstream. I hope that makes sense, but think about it, think about it logically, right? You throw upstream, it goes under a rock, that rock is upstream from you, you pull on it, you're pulling the weight further under the rock. You throw across or barely up and it gets under a rock, you're pulling it out. Just a little tip. So that's it, right? Across, let it float down. You'll feel the weight hit the bottom. It'll tick, tick, and just use your rod tip. When you feel it hit the bottom, bounce it. Tick, 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 right? You're gonna hang up, you're gonna break off, crap happens, break it off, tie on a new one. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how I fish those two rigs and it works really, really well. Let's talk about the last, the last method I use, uh, spinners. Rooster tails, panther martens, blue fox, right? Stuff like that. Um, I do like to fish them, but I don't love them. And they don't seem to catch as many of the stock trout as they used to for me. So if I come up to a spot, right? I'll take out the spinner and I'll throw it through there a few times. I'll probably give it maybe 10 minutes. You know, in 10 minutes I can make 20, 30 casts. Go through a few colors. I generally start with blue. Uh, everyone seems to like fire tiger, pink. I go blue, black, uh, even a, that rainbow color, that pink, green, and white. Uh, I go to those, and if I'm not getting a fish in 10, 15 minutes and 20 or 30 casts, they don't want to see a spinner. And that's why I don't love them. Sometimes you come out and you're going to know if the fish want to see that spinner, they're going to bite it within 5, 10 minutes. And then they'll often bite it again, and you'll know then they want to see a spinner. But more often than not, they don't. So I try it. Don't waste your time if they don't want it. Switch over to this bait, work that bait through the current, through the holes. See if they want that. Chances are they do. Remember, right? Stock trout. They, they're put in there to be caught, right? They know they breathe, they eat. Like, that's what they know, right? They're put in a river and now they're hungry. So use that, that power bait or the power worms, the power eggs. It has a strong scent. They want to eat it and you're not stuck messing with the dough all the time, coming off the hook. Uh, and spinners, if it's not working, don't waste your time. I hope this helps, you know, uh, to the parents, I hope, it I hope it helps you help your kids catch fish. Uh, to you trout fishermen, you know, if you're new or you're looking for a new method, I hope this works for you. Comment with anything you want to share. Comment with a question, reach out to me with a question. Let me know your thoughts on, on trout fishing and have a great day.